Have you noticed that some people, when they talk to you, they seem to just put you at ease or sound very inviting. And I don't know, you just like to consult them or trust everything that they say. Chances are that intentionally or not, they are using a scarf and it's written just like the article of clothing. In this video, we're going to take a look into what is scarf and how we can be a game changer for you in your communication, especially in organizational and change context. So let's get started. Welcome to this channel, my friend. My name is Petula, your host here at All Things Agile. Today's video is all about the SCARF model, and that is a tool that makes you a better communicator. It will also help you understand um, the human side of change in human interactions in general. So what is SCARF? It is a model that shows five visceral dimensions of human response, in particular, um, related to patterns of language and interactions. This model was coined by Dr. David Rock, who later found the Institute for Neural Leadership. And this model of five dimensions, he uncovered the realization that conversations are more than a mere exchange of words. In particularly, he shows that through the use of SCARF, you can either spark or destroy the motivations of your employees. And these five domains or dimensions, they can then elicit a, a response of a fear and a threat from the person you're speaking to, or even the sense of safety and reward. So what are the five dimensions or domains? They are status, certainty, autonomy, relatedness, and fairness. Let's look into each of them. Status. The status speaks about our sense of our personal worth, where we are in relationship to other people. So when you criticize people, either publicly or otherwise, when you just keep giving unsolicited advice, you then start diminishing the sense of a person's status and worth. That is the threat that they perceive in an interaction with you. Now, the sense of worth is heightened, is rewarded when you give that good strength-based feedback, when you recognize and even incentivize people to be working at their best, at the level of their capacity and even surpassing it. You can imagine that as agile transitions happen in organizations, you have new roles being created, old roles disappearing, the skills that got people here will not necessarily be the skills that are necessary for the next phase in the organization. In a very concrete manner, the status and sense of worth of people is highly threatened, especially when agile transitions are deployed in a very industrial manner. So as an agile coach, you want to help leaders format their messages and their interactions in a way that doesn't threaten people's sense of worth. And as you, the agile coach, come into contact with people either coaching them, or even in a casual chat, you want to look for ways to help them restore or at least not further erode their status. Certainty is having a sense of what the future holds for us. While you can't know all the details of everything, we all aim to know the broad strokes. And as you can imagine, a sense of threat is activated when we have no idea why or how that agile transformation is happening and not being exposed to what are really the next steps. It is all in the minds of the change managers. On the other hand, when you can provide dates and um, even the next steps for important projects or for the agile transition that is happening, when you can set clear expectations about roles and processes, people can then attain a level of certainty. But how can you add certainty in a VUCA environment as an agile coach? More than you initially thought. First, you can let people understand their process with you as their coach. When do you meet? How often? What is your role helping them? What is it that you know that respecting confidentiality can be shared with others? Every time you host a meeting, can you be predictably on time? Can you really strive for preserve and guard the time box? 
Can you establish great facilitation processes so that people know when they enter a work session with you, they are in for a good time well spent with a great ROI? So there goes certainty. Autonomy is certainly a misunderstood piece. And autonomy in the workplace became fairly known and widely talked about after the book Drive by Daniel H. Pink. And the truth is that humans want to have agency over the things they do and the choices that they make. That includes the spaces of work, even if they are employees in a highly hierarchical organization. Of course, sometimes managers and other leaders must make a choice on behalf of their people. But if that happens all the time, or worse, if the leaders, or even sometimes you, their agile coach, spend time micromanaging people, everybody gets all up in threat mode. If you want to activate the reward system, you will be creating the opportunity for people to make their own choices and even invite them to offer solutions on how the change can happen, giving them some sense of empowerment and agency. You can help as an agile coach by creating the spaces, for example, where delegation can occur. And you do that by working with the managers and their teams so that the managers will understand that delegating is not dropping and abandoning and disappearing and that the teams understand how powerful it is and also the responsibility behind making the decision themselves. Another thing you can do is to help people define boundaries for their autonomy and understand where it ends and why. This is true for managers and their teams and also even across departments. Relatedness is the sense of safety with others, belonging really. Every time there is a group that makes the decisions and always a group that just follows the decisions or when you have teams working against each other instead of collaborating to achieve solutions, or when you don't pay attention to dismantle those harmful clicks that sometimes exist, you are allowing people to remain in threat mode. Then you want to bring them all to that good reward state of mind where you want to encourage genuine connection and genuine friendliness and even encourage people to get to their next best level through their partnership and um, even mentoring and several other ways of learning and growing together. I would pay attention here on how current processes and team formations either include or separate people. I would work with managers and their teams and even whole departments in figuring out where bridges need to be built for proper dialogue and understanding. And it, yes, this is the famous breaking down of silos, but it's truly a reminder that this sort of thing is not a once and done type of work. In particular, as their Agile coach, I would speak with people acknowledging that I might be at a different step of the journey, but nonetheless that we are together in the journey. And I would definitely listen to them a lot, not only to understand them and have them feel understood, but help them feel part of the change as well. And in here, from the tone of your voice to the choice of word that you make, you can create quite the inclusive workspace. As for the connection and friendliness, I'm not encouraging fake or forced friendships. Pay attention to not falling for those team activities that do nothing to create um, relatability and bond at work. We have a video on that here on the channel. It is really about the humble, simple human connection in generating that sense that is, you know, bring some safety, but is also not overly protective. Remember that you are trying to also elevate people's sense of status and autonomy while giving a sense of relatedness. The final domain of neural leadership in the SCARF model is fairness or the sense of justice and impartiality. Whenever someone feels that they themselves or someone around them are receiving unfair treatment or advantage, they will respond by armoring up and by distrusting their environment. And that is also true with information, not just with the opportunities in the workplace, but feeling that you never know what's going on and that maybe someone else does and having conflicted information can also create that type uh, of, of distrust. And I would say fairness and uh, certainty, they kind of work very much together. So transparent decisions, 
make everything better in here. People can't necessarily uh, have an input on how things will happen all the time. And that is totally fair, but letting people understand why and how decisions are made goes a long way on quieting our minds because our minds, remember, they are looking for certainty. Another thing, having open communication channels, whether if it's written or in person, making sure that people are constantly listen to you. They want to be heard, their fears, their worries, and just their suggestions, really. They want to be part of the change in some shape or form. And if you can, on an extra notch to activate the reward system, look for what already works. Look for that and help other people to do the same. Because if you're paying close attention, some of the behaviors that you want to encourage, some of the great practices are already out there and they just need to be revealed. And that is very empowering and that is super fair to see that you already know how to put things in motion towards the right direction. So as you can see, a lot of clarity and openness create a space of fairness. Like I said, not everybody gets to really um, do everything they wish for in the context of change in an organization. But for the most part, honestly, everybody can contribute to some level to the change. And if anything, everybody deserves the fair treatment of being heard. It's just a human need. So what else can you do as a coach? When you help people understand what are the rules and make those clear, make those explicit, that is already super helpful. When you are truly open on how you yourself communicate, you are demonstrating fairness. When you admit that you don't know or that you made a mistake, that's fairness happening. And as you can imagine, partnering up with leaders for amping up fair treatment and true inclusion goes a long way. In my opinion, we could still have a one hour masterclass and this wouldn't be enough to help you go through all the possibilities of the SCARF model for yourself as a coach. But I hope this video gave you a fair idea. This is such a powerful tool in your coaching toolbox that I use it in both my programs uh, of Agile Coaching Program and Coaching Agile Transitions. And we experiment with a lot of things in practice there. And here is one of the things that is inspired on what we do there that I want to share with you. Filter your communications and your interactions through SCARF. I'll say it again. So whatever you do, you have something to say, you have something that you're going to do. Can you take a moment and filter what that is through the status, certainty, autonomy, relatedness, and fairness? And only then can you act and can you say. So right now, pick that broad communication email that you're about to send. Look at what's written. Look at the information in there. How are you honoring the status of people and their need for autonomy? Would you rewrite something in that? Probably. How can you guarantee that the fairness of the choices that you present will come through? Mm, maybe it's not that good. How would you rewrite that? So that's the sort of thing that you would be doing. Now, here's another example. Have questions that are always on your pocket, on your toolkit of SCARF usage. What are one or two questions that you know that you can ask that would make transparency go up in the room, which helps people with fairness, which helps people with status. What are the questions that you'll be asking to make sure that the choices would seem fair or even clear at all? What can you ask to make sure that people can heighten and even understand boundaries of their own autonomy? So that sort of thing can go also a long way. Have your toolkit of questions. So this this is a little bit of work. You can't learn how to use SCARF just by watching this video once, right? So give yourself some quiet time. Pencil down some ideas. And if you're feeling bold, comment some insights down below because I'd love to read them. This is the sort of exercise that you can do basically every day, at least with your most challenging interactions. And I promise you, over time, SCARF will become that kind of superpower that will transform you into a very effective Agile coach. So that's it. That's the video. I really do hope it was useful. 
and let me know what the scarf is doing for you in your day-to-day -day interactions. I'm sure it's going to do wonders for your practice. That's all that I'll say for this video, already quite long, but I hope it was useful. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one, my friend. Bye.